What's going on? We back. Good fella Sports TV. Shout out to the homie Vic on Twitter. Send me um, this interview with Bob Aram. And it didn't show up in my feed. I had to go find it out on Sirius XM. I link it in the description. Go to that Twitter. You can hear the whole interview uh, right there. And Bob Aram, uh, you know, spilled some tea. You know, he's been hating on Al Heyman. We know that. That's not news. Um, but he says that a few things of, of prominence. He says that. Al Heyman is the reason, let's start off there, the reason why Anthony Joshua Deontay Wilder fight won't happen. He says that Al Heyman is not a boxing guy, and he never wants to make the best fights. He never wants, all he wants to do is make in-house fights. He don't like to take risks with his fighters. He don't like to put his fighters in positions to take risks. And he says uh, Eddie Hearn is a boxing guy. Eddie Hearn will do it in a heartbeat. I'm paraphrasing there. Um... This is after, you know, him saying that, you know, he's an old little fart saying that Anthony Joshua was scared of Deontay Wilder and Eddie didn't want to make the fight. When Eddie came with the zone, he was over here hating on Eddie as well. All of a sudden, he changed his narrative on that. And let me also put this in there before I continue on. Um, he also, you know, he also was saying that, um, you know, Pacquiao and Broner was it's not going to happen. Mikey Garcia and Earl Spence not going to happen. He said those idiots can't make those fights over there, okay? All right. Now, back to him accusing Al Heyman of in-house fights, okay? Um, did, did Al Heyman not send John Molina to HBO and not send Felix Diaz to HBO to fight Terrence Crawford? You know, he says the only time he makes fights is when he has to make those fights, you know, when there's no other choice to make those fights. And we've seen him advise Peter Quillen to drop his belt, <laughs> So, at the end of the day, did he not send Felix Diaz or, or, or did he not send John Lee to fight Terrence Crawford? Did he not? Did Lomachenko not come over to Showtime and beat Gary Russell and win the belt? Did Kell Brook not go over to um, uh, Showtime and beat Sean Porter and win the belt? Tell me that. The Errol Spence not go into the UK country when other fighters wasn't willing to go over there and beat uh, Kell Brook. You tell me the last time you seen Bob Errol uh, go out his way and not make an in-house fight. You let me know last time you seen uh, a matchroom, a prominent matchroom fighter come come over to ESPN and get paid and make that happen. You seen Jorge Linares. He did go out his way to make that fight happen. Salute to him. But that's far in between. All he makes it in house fights. Gilberto Ramirez, Jesse Hart, too. Shouldn't Ramirez be trying to unify with some other t- title holder in the division? Come on. All he does is make in house fights. That's it. Why don't he want to try to make Danny Garcia, Terrence Crawford? Why don't he want to make Sean Porter and Terrence Crawford? Why did he try to lock Terrence Crawford into a long term deal? Why? Why do you watch Sean Porter into a long-term deal? He did. He offered Sean Porter a long-term deal to come over and fight Terrence Crawford. When he turned it down and said he's loyal to Al Heyman, that he didn't want a long-term deal to have to fight Terrence Crawford. You know what he did? He said, oh, he's not an elite welterweight. We're not looking to fight him. So how can you accuse Al Heyman of, of doing in-house fights? But that's all you do is in-house fights. That's it. That's it. That's all Bob Aram does is in-house fights. You might get a Linares every now and again, but he knew Lomachenko would be Linares. Linares was knocked out several times his career. You've seen guys come over to to, to Showtime. Vaz Rosian came over. He switched over for a minute and got paid. You know, you know, um, Jamie McDowell came over to PBC and fought Kamada and, and left with a victory. So, you know, don't don't sell me that. Ricky Burns came and fought Omar Figueroa. Al Heyman puts on Al Heyman puts on way more uh, you know, fights outside outside of the in-house network than Bob Aram does. He's just jealous because Lomachenko and Terrence Crawford is about their careers is about to wilt away without Al Heyman. That's a fact. That's a super duper fact right there. And he says Al Heyman is not a boxing guy. 
I mean, his brother did box. So, I mean, his brother did box. He fought Sugar Ray Leonard, Bobby Heyman. So, you, you let me know, Bob Aaron, what family member you had that box. You let me know what Eddie Hearn family member, family, uh, Eddie Hearn box. Now, he want to ride on Eddie Hearn's jockstrap after he was destroying Eddie Hearn about a month ago. Because, guess what? His fighter's being froze out. Because Terrence Crawford ain't got no fights. He got to fight Booz Putin and, and, and a Jose Benavidez rematch. So, I mean, seriously. Seriously, it's to hate that deep that you, you being a hypocrite here. And really, you can't be a hypocrite because Al Heyman don't just put on in-house fights. Now he's starting to put on in-house fights because Golden Boy sued him. But didn't he make Chavez Jr. versus Canelo Alvarez? He made that fight happen. <laughs> we just named several fights. Can you name several fights that, that that top rank may happen? That they invited somebody to come over to top rank and fight, and then they beat their fighter, and they didn't have to sign a contract extension? Or they didn't go out their way to sign a fighter to a long-term deal? Have you seen a fighter come to HBO, come to top, top rank other than Lenares that fought on ESPN and left and didn't have to sign a long-term contract with top rank? You ain't seen it. You haven't seen that. Isaac Dogbay, he wasn't no top rank fighter. They had options on him, like three or four options. And they overpaid him up front to sign a contract extension with top rank. Robert Brandt just beat Rayota Murata. Now he's about to sign a contract extension with top rank. Because top rank don't want to use that, lose that regular belt. And then he said, he goes on to say that, um, he goes on to say that the only reason Mayweather Pacquiao happened is because Showtime told Steven Espinosa that that fight didn't happen, that Showtime was pulling out of boxing. Now, at the end of the day, do anybody believe that crap? No, nobody believes that, you know. Because after that fight, what 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 stop what stop Showtime from not from staying in boxing after that fight? You know, so off the strength of Mayweather, they was gonna cancel Showtime boxing. Come on, ain't nobody reported that. He don't he don't know nothing. The reason that fight happened is because Bob Arum finally, finally wanted finally wanted to cash out on Manny Pacquiao. Both of the guys' pay per views were doing were, were doing terrible. Pacquiao shit was what in the five hundred thousands or or low, depending on which, which what you know what you believe and what they reported. Excuse me, what they reported. They milked Pacquiao. They milked Pacquiao as much as possible. That's why that pay per view didn't happen. Pacquiao went around fighting Floyd Mayweather leftovers. Claiming that he didn't want to take a drug test because of he was scared of needles but had tattoos. Oh, that's what Bob Arum doing. They didn't want that fight. When Bob Arum, you know, couldn't make no more money off Pacquiao, couldn't cash in no more off Pacquiao like he once did. When the pay-per-views wasn't hitting a million, multi-million dollar pay-per-views. When May- Mayweather pay-per-views wasn't hitting like they was hitting, they made that fight happen when they had to. It was both financial. They both benefited financially for the fight. Everybody got paid. Bob Barham got paid. Mayweather got paid. Al got paid. Steven Espinosa got paid. Everybody got paid. So you telling me off the strength of a Mayweather Pacquiao fight that Showtime was going to end boxing? I don't believe that. If he didn't go make that fight happen, I don't believe that. Why is he waiting now to say this? He waited now to say it because guess what? Al Heyman got his foot on his neck. You know, now he want to work with Lou DiBella. Now he want to work with Frank Warren. Al Heyman been doing that. Let's keep it real. Al Heyman been working with Frank Warren and Lou DiBella for years. Been working with him. He knows, he knows it's over with. His two top stars with top rank, Lomachenko, whose contract is about to be up reportedly, and Terrence Bud Crawford can't move without PBC fighters. 
He just can't move. There he has the WBO belt for Terrence Crawford. And other than that, he don't have nobody to fight. Apparently, eventually the fans will turn and they they will catch on. You know, they probably gonna say it's Earl fought. They probably gonna say it's Keith Thurman fought. They probably gonna say it's Sean Porter fought. But you tell me when Bob Arum offered them a fight deal to come over and fight Terrence Crawford, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter. He offered Sean Porter a, a contract to come in the top rank and fight Terrence Crawford. Why would I sign a contract, a full a, a multi year contract to come and fight Terrence Crawford? Why can't I just come over there, sign a fight, Terrence Crawford? If I win, I can leave and do what I want to do. If I lose, you win. You got two belts. You tell me that. Why is he try to offer Keith Thurman a fight when he, uh, you know, before? He said you can tune up once and then we we can talk about a fight. Why? Cause he, cause he, he already know he don't want he don't want to do that. Lomachenko. Now he want to see. First he says, "I'm not dealing with Mikey Garcia." You know he takes what we give him. Now all of a sudden you want to make a deal with Mikey Garcia, knowing that he about to fight Earl Spence. Now all of a sudden you wanna, you wanna, you wanna, uh, you wanna do a deal with Mikey and Lomachenko in March, cause he ain't got shit else. Ain't nobody a lightweight for Lomachenko to fight without PBC, without Tank, without Gary Russell coming up. You know, ain't no fights out there. For we gonna fight uh, without Robbie Jr. We gonna fight Richard Comey. Cause he ain't moving up. Who he gonna fight? Same thing for Terrence Crawford. Who he gonna fight? Vargas. He can't fight Vargas. He ain't top rank. The Lord may rematch. You might want to see that. Booz Putin. Nobody know who Booz Putin is. Ingus, who fight this Friday. Nobody. He garbage. They ain't selling. Jose Benavidez Jr. rematch. Come on, man. Who buying that? This is the this is the cry that comes before the fall. This is him crying out for help, being desperate, trying to manipulate the media. But what he don't understand is that that old media shit don't run shit no more. Don't nobody listen to Serum XX, uh, SMX boxing. Don't nobody uh, listen to Stevie Kim. Nobody read what Stevie Kim write. Don't ain't nobody reading articles no more like that for real. Casual public ain't reading articles no more. Hardcore fans barely read articles. They looking at visuals. They fucking with the vloggers. They fucking with the YouTubers. You know what I'm saying? You know, they having debates on social media. All that him going to these media outlets, Fight Hub and, and, and Vilify Media and going to say, hey, don't, I mean, salute to them. But they ain't got the juice. Remember that. They ain't got the juice. They might have inflated subscribers, but their views ain't no better than none of the other channels out here. They views ain't better than Dante. It ain't better than 7-8. It ain't better than Ego. They live streams ain't better than Black Fight fans. So, I mean, they not better than Fanon's live streams. You know what I'm saying? You know? There's few of the other brothers. They got bigger, bigger, better platforms as well, too. They not the voice of the streets no more. So you crying to them ain't going to work. Because we feeding the streets knowledge and feeding them what's going on. And putting out real facts. You just hating. You old. You in a position of weakness. You want to try to sue Al Ham. You do everything to try to bring the brother down. He ain't said no two words. First he fake. He ain't real. He all, Now all of a sudden. You know he a cancer to box. How can I be a cancer if I'm something of fiction? If I'm a fictional character. How can I be cancerous to, to your business? If I'm not real. How can I be cancerous to your business? Now, he's been a hypocrite. He just came out and said, oh, Joshua didn't want the fight. Now, that Al Heyman pissed him off because he froze Terrence Crawford and he freezing Lomachenko out because you tried to sue him. Now you now you crying. But y'all know how the game go. I'll link that interview in the description. It's about uh, a minute 45, a minute uh, 45 seconds of the interview. Uh, it's good, fellow Sports TV. Don't forget, we on Facebook, Twitter as well. You can email me. Also, the Facebook group links in the description. Email me, add me, DM me, tweet me, video request, whatever you want to do. You can email me, uh, you know, business inquiries, sponsorships, whatever the business may be. Um, salute. You want to make a donation to the channel? That link is always there. You can do me one better. Share the videos across social media. Um, share them wherever. I definitely appreciate you guys for you know helping grow the brand. On a race to 10,000 subs before the end of the year. Let's help get get us there. 
Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the bell icon button. We'll miss another video. Y'all know what the business is. Mr. One Time for the One Time Goodfellow Sports TV. And um, we gone.